This is a follow-up tutorial on tricky diode bias circuit. Now, in the previous tutorial, we basically just sweep through each one of these cases and we were able to determine whether the diode was forward or reverse bias in each one of these cases. Now, uh, in this follow-up tutorial, I'd like to uh, go a little bit in depth of each one of these cases. Now, we've got a question here that basically say we need to determine whether each silicon diode in each case below is forward bias or is reverse bias. Now, there is a reason why they say silicon diode. And that is basically simple because that is the most widely used diode. And we know that a silicon diode have a typical forward voltage drop of 0 0.7. But that is in a, a practical uh, diode, in a real life application of a diode. But now in this case, they're not telling us whether we need to consider a, a diode in an ideal uh, world or in a real world application. Because an ideal diode, we know that uh, when it's conduct it basically acts as a short right so which means there is a very low impedance if not zero so there is absolutely not going to be any uh, voltage drop across a short right so it's a perfect conductor and when it is reverse bias so basically it will be an open so there's not going to be any current that going to cross over in the reverse bias mode so this is an ideal diode right and we also have a practical diode application whereby we know for a silicon diode there is going to be a 0.7 volt drop across the diode when it's conduct and this uh, 0.7 volt drop will result in a power losses across the diode so that typically illustrate here that on an ideal diode characteristics we have zero volt drop so basically the 2.5 volt is delivered to the load here and we can see that there is more glow on the load but in a practical application because we are not subtracting a 0.7 volt so basically we only getting a 1.8 volt to de deliver to the load and that means less glow right and we have also a complete model of a diode whereby we have to take account of its internal characteristics or parasitics uh, parameters whereby in a forward bias there's going to be a rd a small resistance that's going to basically that is a resistance that will dissipate some heat when the current cross and allow a voltage drop and in accordance with the forward voltage drop as well as you can see, it's model here, we've got a VB, which would be the forward voltage drop, and then we've got RD. And in a reverse uh, bias mode, now the parasitic uh, uh, resistance in there is going to be a huge resistance. So basically in the uh, range of mega ohm, and that basically will illustrate an open circuit as we see here. And there's not going to be any current that will cross over. So... Those are the three characteristics of where you can analyze a diode. Now, coming back to our uh, applications here, they're basically just saying we need to find out whether the diodes are reverse bias or they are forward bias. Now, here it's very simple because they're not saying whether it's ideal or uh, practical or complete. So now in this case here, in order to determine whether each one of these diodes are either forward or reverse diode, you need to understand the internal structure of the diode. We know that internally the diode is made of P material and N material, right? And then it is doped with some impurity. So what you need to understand by that is that in order for the diode to be forward bias, the anode here right the anode need to be more positive than the cathode so it doesn't matter uh, what's the voltage level it just need to be more positive okay so which basically mean if you are for instance sitting on a cartesian x-axis here and you know you have a zero here and you've got a minus one here now we know that 
zero is bigger than minus one so that basically mean if you've got zero volt here and you have minus one volt here you can say that this diode is actually forward biased why because zero volt is more positive than minus one volt now remember this is just an illustration right and we are ignoring the fact that a silicon diode must drop 0.7 volt in order for it to be forward bias right we are ignoring that factor we are just simply saying that for this diode to be forward bias we have to have the anode to be more positive case number one here number a so we've got a 5 volt that's basically moving this direction and we've got a 8 volt that is also moving this direction so which means these two power supplies are moving in opposite direction right they are in series but they're moving in opposite direction so like i said earlier if you run a loop here you will end up having a negative three volt at this point here clearly the anode is negative so which means this particular diode here is not forward bias right so it's not forward bias in this case now we move on to this case here now in this case you only have one power supply with a serial resistor and we can clearly see that this is the loop the current is flowing in this direction okay so there is a little bit of voltage drop here but now there is a small trap here they're clearly illustrating that this anode here of this diode is connected to a ground right now we know that ground is supposed to be at a reference point which is zero volt okay but now when you see zero volt and you see at this cathode side here we got minus 100 volt now what do you see here you can clearly see that zero volt is greater than minus 100 volt like i've illustrated earlier here so which means this particular diode is indeed forward biased this diode is forward bias now we're moving to case c now in case c we also have a single power supply which is pushing the current this way right now what is going to happen here is that we have a series of resistors that are basically connected in series and the diode is tapping at this point here now what is this point here this is the point of interest that will tell us whether this diode is actually conducting or it's not conducting now we can already start solving our problem by knowing that all this point here they're sitting at zero volt because this is a ground level reference okay so that's zero volt so that basically mean we only need to ensure that we have a positive voltage at this point and that is all that we need at this point to have this point to be greater than zero volt and that will make this particular diode to be forward bias okay now the mathematics here will tell us that uh, the one kilo ohm and the 1.5 kilo ohm are in series here and they're gonna give us a 2.5 kilo ohm so 2.5 kilo ohm will then form a voltage divider with a 4.7 kilo ohm and automatically if you run your voltage divider loop here you're going to get a voltage here there will be an x voltage here that will be positive meaning that the positive voltage will then flow this way and some voltage will drop across the 4.7 kilo ohm resistor and there will be some voltage present at this point and that voltage will be more positive than the zero volt and that will make this particular diode to be forward bias so this case is also forward bias now we come to the last option here now the last option is a bit interesting here we've got two power supplies that are connected in series okay and they are both moving in the same direction as you can see conventional current flow the 10 volt is moving this way and the 20 volt conventional current flow is also moving this way the current is splitting here and here now in order to determine whether this diode is reverse or forward bias we have two particular point of interest so the first point is this point here 
Now we can say that this point is already sitting at zero volt, ground level. Now what about this point? Now this point here, Vx. Now what is the value of Vx? We don't know. Okay? But now we need to uh, analyze this circuit so that we can find the value of Vx. Now, as I said on the previous uh, video, if I run a loop, a separate loop in this chamber here like that, we're going to realize that this diode will be forward biased because this point will be more positive based on this power supply here. Now, if I run the loop this way, this diode will be reverse biased because now this point here will be more positive. So the, cat the cathode will be more positive than the anode, so it will be reverse biased. So two different cases. But now we need to know whether the diode is forward or reverse uh, biased by combining the entire circuit analysis. Well, then we need to analyze the circuit. So let's run an external loop to both this power supply. I'm going to start at this point here. Okay, so I'm going to go this way. Okay, and this way around. So which means the first uh, voltage here is 10 volt, which is positive 10 volt minus VR. So let's say this is R1 and this is R2. So minus, why minus? Because it's a voltage drop. So minus VR1, minus VR2, okay? Minus, minus 20 volt, because there is a negative 20 volt at this point here. So that will give me plus 20 volt. Is it equal to zero? That's a question that we need to answer. Whether this loop is equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then the equation verify and we'll be able to know what's the voltage at this point here. Is this equation equal to zero? Let's solve it. So we've got 10 volt plus 20 volt. That give me my 30 volt. Now I'm going to have minus VR1 and VR2, which are basically I R1 minus I R2. Is this equal to zero? Now, here we can see that we've got a common current here, okay, which is a series current as it's flowing through. So I'm going to have 30 volt minus I. I will factor the current, then I have R1 plus R2. Okay, now if I solve this, I know that R1 and R2 they are basically 20k, okay, so which is basically going to give me 30 volt here. Let me just leave it 30 minus I and then 20K. Is it equal to zero? So this basically mean uh, the current here. So minus I is going to be negative 30 divided by 20K, which is 10 to the power 3. Okay. Now this negative and this negative, they will cancel out. Now you need to solve this. So this will give you a current value of 1.5 milliamps. In other words, 1.5 10 to the power minus 3 amp. Now we have a current. Now we can take this current and replace it in this equation here. So we're going to have 30 minus 1.5 10 to the power minus 3 times 20 10 to the power 3. Is this equal to 0? Yes, it is equal to 0 because now this will cancel. This will cancel. So you're going to have minus 1.5 times 20. So minus 1.5 times 20 will give you negative 30. So negative 30 and that is indeed equal to 0. So we basically mean because these two resistors are equal. So we have a voltage of 30 volt across the two of them so you're going to have 15 volt there and 15 volt here okay now here comes a tricky part because you've got 15 volt across this resistor here this resistor so there is a 15 volt across r2 now because there is a 50 15 volt across r2 and there is a negative 20 volt here so the 15 volt and the negative 20 volt they sums up and the result will be minus 5 volt so that means this point here is negative 5 volt 
So this point is negative 5 volt. Okay, so because this point is at negative 5 volt and this point is at 0, like we said earlier, 0 is greater than negative 5 sitting here. So that means this diode is indeed forward bias. This is it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please make sure you tune into the next tutorial where we're going to uh, determine what is the actual voltage drop across each one of these diodes in the ideal model, the practical model and the complete model. And we're going to demonstrate by wiring up each one of these circuits with the power supplies and the resistors so that we can actually verify those values in a real uh, circuit. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay tuned. Please give this tutorial a thumbs up if you find it useful. Until next time, cheers.